So I want to talk about this $2 trillion Corona Stimulus Package or the CARES Act, Corona Aid, Relief and Economic Stimulus Act and what it's going to do for the healthcare system. Now, because of COVID-19, all this social distancing has caused the economy and businesses to suffer. The healthcare industry is no different. Now, hospitals and doctor's offices have all seen a significant drop in volume. This is reduced revenue and made it really difficult for um, these um, practices and hospitals to pay the bills and pay people's salaries and still stay open and function. Now, despite this corona surge, most of the revenue coming into hospitals, for example, is from elective procedures such as surgeries and outpatient procedures, testing, office visits, etc. Now, when that's sort of eliminated in this realm of social distancing, it becomes a big problem. And not to mention they have to reroute resources and spend more money for the infrastructure needed for COVID-19. Similarly, doctor's offices who really rely on outpatient office visits and outpatient office procedures and tests, they're also suffering. In fact, you may have seen in the news that hospitals are reducing people's salaries, not giving certain benefits. There are private practices, including ours, who had to have doctors and employees cut down hours, sometimes furlough employees, and all these different types of things to kind of stay afloat. Now, the good news is this stimulus package should provide some significant economic relief. Now, there's two things that the healthcare system needs right now. One is to take care of COVID-19, make sure we got the supplies, the ability, the manpower to get a hold of this disease and flatten this curve. And number two is when we emerge from this storm, we gotta make sure our healthcare system doesn't collapse. So right now, financial assistance is needed from the hospitals all the way down to the doctors. So let's take a look at what the hospitals are getting. So in this act, the biggest thing is the $100 billion that the hospitals are going to be getting in throughout the United States. How that $100 billion is going to be divvied up, who's going to get what, again, remains to be seen. Also, I wonder how quickly they can deploy that capital to get into the hands of these institutions. Now, $16 billion is going to go towards supplies and equipment. This is everything from PPEs to ventilators to everything that the hospital needs to both take care of COVID-19 and function. The VA health system itself is gonna be getting $20 billion and there's an additional $1.6 billion going to community health centers. In addition to that, they're giving a 20% bump for reimbursement to hospitals when they take care of COVID-19 patients. There is um, some provisions to allow telehealth to be more easily implemented and potentially secure some degree of reimbursement for that, although, so far it doesn't seem to be that much. Now there are some non-COVID provisions in there that will actually also benefit the hospital financially. One of those things is a delay in the Medicare reimbursement cuts. So there was a 2% cuts in Medicare payments um, around the board that is not gonna be pushed back till at least December. Now there was also gonna be a payment cut by Medicaid. And this has also been reversed for the years of 2020, 2021. And this is gonna be applicable to hospitals that are taking care of underserved populations and Medicaid populations. Additionally, hospitals are gonna be able to apply for interest-free loans. And the amount they get is gonna be based on six months of Medicare. And uh, the problem with that is not all these hospitals are even operating at a profit. So will they be able to later pay back those loans? Again, that remains to be seen. Finally, all businesses are getting a payroll tax credit, which will also help uh, alleviate some costs. So the hospitals got a good amount of stuff. Hopefully it's gonna be enough to get the job done. Now let's take a look at what is going to be in store for the private practice physician, like our group and many other groups out there. Then the main thing that's gonna be in store for these groups is the small business loan provision, okay? This applies to all small businesses, less than 500 employees. There's about $370 billion out there. And these are going to be loans that are set up with your local banks. And the intention is they're gonna be forgiven should the businesses meet the qualifications. Now, what, the, what they're looking for is that this money is gonna to go towards things like paying payroll, making sure employees do not lose their jobs and benefits, and rent and other infrastructure costs to keep the machine going. But the practices, again, have to assure they're not gonna lay anybody off and benefits are gonna be maintained, etc. Now, that's gonna be really helpful for these private practice groups. Now, the question becomes when that money shows up. 
Right now, people are still struggling and trying to make payroll. And in, because of that, people have had to cut down hours, furlough employees, and some groups have even laid off employees. So, and doctors have cut down to just a few days a week in some cases. So there's a lot of things that we're doing to stay afloat. Um, so that is gonna continue until really that money shows up. There's also provisions for um, employees who've actually lost their jobs or become furloughed as a result of COVID-19 and it helps maintain some cash and benefits for those affected by that. Now, the primary care physicians out there really have taken a significant hit because they're really relying on office visits. So right now there are no office visits going on. Telehealth is not a perfect replacement. So um, I think that is um, those loans are really gonna help them out. Finally, the payroll tax credit does also apply to, again, these small business private practices. That should also give a little bit of alleviation. Now, hopefully, um, we're all going to get through this, and hopefully these, this plan and these provisions are going to be enough to keep the healthcare system afloat. I think what we have to do is focus on flattening our curve. Everybody needs to do their part to really stay home. The peaks in most states has not hit yet. The faster we can control this COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic, the faster our country can get back to normal functioning and everybody can sort of try to get slowly get back to um, a regular way of living. So anyway, that's it for today. Hopefully this cleared up a little bit about what the healthcare sector at least is going to get from the stimulus package. So um, again, please like this video and subscribe to the channel and thanks for stopping in.